right, Vladimir Kuzbekov, Kuzbekov, excuse me. I'm trying to, I'm yep. trying to say so many names today uh, on a different live stream. How are you doing, my friend? Where are you at right now? I'm just driving around in Niagara, parked right now. So how's, I'm how's good. How's everything? How are you? Uh, How's everything there? Is it already locked down? Or are we waiting for this after Christmas lockdown? I think we're waiting after Christmas lockdown and uh, I won't be here. I'm leaving literally on, the, on Christmas Day. Yeah, Flying let's not out. Tell man. Let's not tell people where you're going. <laughs> Unless you want yeah, to. Yeah, are we allowed to swear here? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so you, I, I checked... Um, I was checking your sure dog, of course, as you will with any fighter. And you're with BTC, obviously, before. But you haven't fought this year. Has there just been not been any opportunities? Has your gym been closed down? What's the deal going with you right now? Well, my last fight was on uh, <clears throat> February 29th. So I did actually fight this year. And uh, it was in BTC in Kitchener. I won and I finally like performed like how I wanted. I guess I... I, uh, it, I stepped over that psychological barrier that I had in my head. And then um, and then I was like, holy shit, I'm going to get another fight and, and another one and another one. And then Corona hit two weeks after my fight. I think, yeah, because it's end of February. And then, and then so everything was closed. I thought nobody knew that you could fly in the States. Everything was closed. No promotions were doing anything. So I was for like seven, six months, I was sitting doing nothing. And then, and then like UFC came back, so I, I flew to Fight Island twice, which, which was like a month and a half each time. And then that that put, so and that that kind of stopped my training for, so I couldn't prepare for any fights. <clears throat> and now I'm back. I'm hopefully I'll be fighting January 14th or 29th in Florida. Cool. <clears throat> Are you, did you say you went to Fight Island? I worked for the UFC for the okay. for about four years already. Yeah, so uh, so yeah, they called me. They're like, "We're back. We need you. Let's go to Fight Island." And I'm like, "Let's go." So I went to the first one. I went to the second. Now I will be going to the third, but I'll most likely cancel if my fight gets confirmed. So because I can't pu- I can't keep putting my career on hold for mm-hmm. for the UFC, even though that's stupid because that's a good money. That's I have I have a chance to replace somebody if somebody gets corona. Okay. And I can get like I can get lucky and be in the UFC. But I don't I I'd rather I do I did it two times already, so I'd rather I'd rather just pursue my career cuz I'll be old after you know. <laughs> <laughs> We're all getting old. The, it seems like we've all wasted 10 months at this point. Um so I what's the time flu? Yeah. So what's that like? You, I'm guessing you get tested here and then you have to, I, I think you have to quarantine in, in Vegas, I think, or do they quarantine you wherever you're at? How does that work before you go over? Uh, well, they buy me a ticket to Vegas. I get to Vegas, they pick me up. I can't go anywhere. Literally after airport, I, I'm already in their possession, in the UFC's possession. And I get into the hotel, the UFC hotel, they swabbed me for the test and they put me in the room for 36 hours. And that, that will, pretty much I'll be in the room up until they pick me up to the airport to fly to the island. And uh, so right, like, few, like <clears throat> a few hours before we fly out, the results come back. And whoever is, if you're, ne- if you're negative, you're going. If you're positive, you're not. <laughs> so, yeah. What's it like when you're actually on there? I, I, there's not much other than the embedded, and I don't know if you know the YouTubers Nelk. They had a, a lot of the stuff on there. What, are you yeah. allowed to go around? Are what's what's the life on the island actually like if you're not just, you know, training, or being part uh, of the with, setup? With, yeah, with Nelk uh, on their on their episode. Actually, I was on on that episode. Uh, they <clears throat> they showed them going somewhere. I think it was Dana White set it up with with Arabs because the nobody can no, nobody's allowed to leave the island. But somehow they left it and the and they were at the resort with people. So that's that's not the case. And uh, when uh, you're a regular person on the island, it's just UFC personnel and that's it. The whole island is evacuated. Whole island is has like uh, by every entrance and 
every entrance or every exit, whatever, of the island, police forces on there. So, so you can't leave. Only one hotel operating with, with the restaurants and then the beach. So everything to ourselves, pretty much. We have our own island and we have personnel there working. So everything is awesome. But the thing is, the only down thing, you cannot leave. But I don't blame them. <laughs> because even, even while being on that island, somehow people test positive. Like passing multiple tests before flying to negative test, negative test, and they get in, they, they test negative and then they stay for a week and then somehow they become, uh, they, they, they test positive that happened. So, so yeah, I don't, I don't blame them. Everything is done properly. So is it a fun experience or does it get old fast? Just like being on this Island or is it just basically the same as, as where you live or you just can't leave? No, oh, it's it's awesome. Just I don't know, like UFC made everything. Everything I don't know. It's just the personality there's working. The the bunch of restaurants and then they treat you like literally. Some one, one time I was like, oh my god, this is what slavery looks like because the, the, the personnel was so nice. I felt so bad for asking them to do things because it feel like oh fuck, man. They're like I, I feel like I'm like the owner of a slave or something. At some point, I was like. I don't, I just didn't want to ask them to do because they, they overdone everything. It's just awesome in that, in, in that sense. <clears throat> and then, and then the food is awesome. The beach is awesome. Plus you're next to the, all the celebrities. Well, for me, it's not a big deal anymore because I've been doing it for four years. So I'm not like a fanboy. I don't even post pictures. People are like, Oh, how, how, how come we don't have pictures? But I, I could, I could take an, I took, taking a picture with every single celebrity, but I don't. And, no fanboy but so what is yeah. your job there then because i've only i've only known you from btc have you actually do you seen me fight in btc yeah when i was doing a podcast a couple of years ago and it got me into all the canadian uh like promotions like tko and btc and then what's the other one called uh hard knocks hard, or something hard knocks no a different one um I don't, I don't remember, but it's got a lot of, it had a lot of the big Canadians on it as well. So what's the, what job do you do for them? Well, <clears throat> mainly I'm a translator from the UFC and Russian, UFC Russia translator, but I also organize everything for the Russians. So pretty much like a, like not Russian, uh, amb- UFC Ru- ambassador for Russia or whatever, but uh, yeah. I just do everything, just take care of all their interviews and um, so all the Russian fighters, kind of, unless, uh, unless you learn English, then I have nothing to do with you. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but if you don't know English, then you're with me. Yeah. How do you get into a job like that? Is it, is it through knowing other fighters? Did you just apply like any other job? How did that happen? Yeah, I know in UFC it's it's you can't really apply. You can't. Well, there's like a union, and uh, for me, I just got lucky. I was four years ago in New Jersey, which is gym called K Dojo. It's one of my gyms I still represent it, and that's what Habib started. That's where Habib started. He had two UFC fights from that gym, first two UFC fights. So we went. So I was there preparing for a title fight, and then my opponent pulled out three days before. And then the same, same, same day where my fight was supposed to be, there was a UFC New Jersey. I think it was Ryan Bader and Anthony Johnson main event. And then UFC calls my coach and said that a day before the event and asked if there's any English Russian speaking people in the gym. And he's asked, he asked why. And they said that something happened to their translator. So they needed somebody they needed to replace somebody. And they, they called him because he's, he was like the main, like he brought Habib in and all the Russian fighters initially to the United States. So they, they knew who to call. And then I was there. He was like, there's an opportunity. You want to do it? And I'm like, what do I have to do? He's like, just translate, but you're going to be sitting right next to Joe Rogan by the cage. And I'm like, fuck, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so, and here I am. I did a better job than I guess than uh, whoever that guy is. Their translator since that day I was... I was pretty much hired and been working with them for many, many events. Like I don't even know, like probably thirty events I did already. 
Nice. That's awesome. And the other one that I was talking about was PFC prospect fighting championship. Oh yeah. How could I forget that? uh, Yeah. 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 It's Jamie champion is the owner of it. Yeah. It's amazing. Amazing promotion. I most likely I will fight eventually for them as well. And I feel like the lockdown sort of like, man, did it essentially kill TKO? It must've hurt the, cause they were on such high momentum tko and pfc and all these canadian ones they were getting because there's so much talent spreading out there was the laramies <coughs> and jesse ronson is one that was on <coughs> your card i believe and uh, i don't yep. know um the younger uh jordan probably could have i he might have fought but he might have just been in tko yeah, but there are yeah. so many up and coming canadian fighters and uh, i feel like there could have been twice as many in the ufc now if these things didn't if these didn't close down, are you hearing a lot from like, do a lot of the guys, you know, is their career been completely halted? Well, my career has been completely halted, but not, not too much because of COVID, but yes, I have my, my full of my full gym is, is on hold kind of because uh, Americans, they don't like in America, in, in Florida and Kansas and Alabama, there's a bunch of States, the, the Trump States, the, the people that for Trump, <laughs> they 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 run show, they allow shows, and uh, but Americans that they they put Americans those shows they have limited space right so they they don't they don't want Canadians, <clears throat> so not a lot of people can get fights, and I don't know about the TKO situation to be honest because once you're on hold it's not like you're paying rent somewhere, mm-hmm. like promotions are not, more pro, promotions not like small business so you don't really go bankrupt. You just don't have oh, fights, so you don't. Yeah, because like, well, what happens with the MMA promotions? They just rent out a place, and then prior, like a week prior, they will just put deposit on the on the arena, and then do tickets and stuff. So if you're not doing it, you're not doing it. You know what I mean? So it's not like yeah. you're paying money or something. But I feel like it's just going to be hard for them to get the momentum back. That's that's just my opinion. Oh yeah, about the, that. Oh, 100 percent, hundred percent, everything is everything is stuck and even in but the hardest thing is to come back now because no no in canada because <clears throat> i want i want to i want to have btc fighters like as soon as the btc comes back i'm going to be on it but they they told me that the the first two events most likely will be in btc gym be without audience so mm-hmm. imagine how hard it, it will be for them to make money because in Ontario it's it's ridiculously expensive that's why there's not a lot of shows that's why only like two shows right now for the past five years we only have like two MMA shows and then we MMA promotions because it's a very hard it's a lot of money and um, so they're coming back how are they going to make money there's no 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 ticket sales and the pay-per-views well, what is it like twenty dollars you can't make a pay-per-view like yeah, expensive. maybe they can strike up a deal with with Fight Pass or something because maybe they'll have sympathy for all this, but it's hard <clears> to tell. But the way TKO was going, for example, with Jordan and um, TJ Laramie and then um, Mark Andre Barrio, I feel like they had just opened a door where they were getting more and more people in. But here we are. Yep. So you mentioned that you were fighting in January or February. Is this which promotion is this with? If it's in Florida. Uh- well, in Florida, I'm not sure if it's going to be in Florida. I'm more, I'm, I'm hoping we're trying. We're we're pretty much talking to some promotions right now that haven't decided if they're going to do a um, show in January or February. So if, if any promotion is doing it in January, then it's going to be Florida, and it's probably going to be Icon promotion and or Fight Island, Island Fights actually. It's called Island Fights. Maybe Titan if they decide to do a January show. But if not, then it's going to be uh, Kansas for Alifay. Cool. Well, I LFA. look forward to seeing that. Um, you want to talk about the lockdown? Do you want to talk about Corona? I see you po- you're you one of the – I mean, there's a big crossover here. I'm, I think everyone's starting to notice with the UFC, with MMA, with MMA fans and fighters that they're, they're more – I don't even want to say Republican or something, but I guess you could or just at least conservative or maybe just not – insane at this point i don't know how have you had bad reactions from people you know about it do you get support what's it like being a person involved with the ufc and an mma and a fighter yourself what's the reactions like from people that you know when you say stuff like this yeah uh initially well my last fight when i won i put 
I put on a MAGA hat in a cage. I opened and I read a chapter of Triggered inside of the cage. So and then all, of, all of the people that were cheering for me, half of them started booing. And I was like, oh, how quickly you can just jump, jump off, you know, all these, fan, all these fans are bullshit. That's, you know what? I love haters. Bring me, bring me more haters, you know. I, I, I love them. Uh, and then <clears throat> what really happened with me, like, with me just being real, not just playing, playing into this narrative of anti-Trump bullshit narrative that, like, spread by this media and then people just buying into it that people don't even have like if you if you have some sort of beliefs and you have to uh, adapt to the majority and by majority we're speaking of this celebrities and stuff and this like models and actors and shit but they're not even majority they're just loud enough and people feel like oh in order for you to progress in life you have to just follow or like you have to be with them for some reason they, and they forget about the regular people so they just they give up on their own principles, on their own morals, on their own belief, and they just go and and sing an anti-Trump music, uh, anti-Trump song, whatever. <clears throat> For me, I just I really liked the people booing me, and I'm uh, leaving my life to be honest, because like I have people, a lot of people unfollowed me, like around thousand people already unfollowed me on Instagram, um, and I love it. Because I'm, it's not really <laughs> them following me. It's me filtering out negative bullshit, fake people out of my life, and that's unfortunately that's exactly how it is. Like this is my harsh words towards these people. You know, I love them. I, whatever. Like I let them. Let them. Haters are good. I, I welcome them all the time. But I I kind of filtered filtered all the shit like this. So and then in UFC, for example. Because Dana White is pro-Trump. Dana White loves Trump. And then people in a, in a fight business, they're men. Like, you know, you cannot be fake in fight business. You can't be a bitch in a fight business. You have to be a man. You have to have testosterone. You have to have balls. <clears throat> and by that, I mean not just, uh, like, I, you have to have balls. It applies to females as well. So it's just like the figure of speech. And then when you go there, people that are against Trump and all these haters, like you don't, you don't see, you don't hear them. You you know they're there, not as many, but they're staying quiet, which <laughs> would everywhere, yeah, which would everywhere else it would be opposite in NBA or NHL or whatever, all those <clears throat> bullshit places. <laughs> people I mean, would, honestly, would all of like, I was never NBA, for example. When I was younger, I watched it a lot. And then, of course, when the Raptors were doing well last year, I was watching. But they re- like I would have paid more attention during the lockdown to sports if they weren't like everything, the NBA especially, their shirts, their shoes, the court, just everything. And then hockey, I thought we'd get an escape from that. They do one little thing at the beginning, and that's fine. And then people complain that they didn't do enough, so then goalies are taking a knee. Like, it's so forced. And the only things that are left are MMA and then some European soccer where, like, they're all, some of them tried to do it, no doubt, but there's they're just like – yeah. To be fair, they've been dealing with racism in soccer in Europe for a long time. So they're not really that yeah. phased by like one random thing happening on the other continent. So they've got to have lost so many people. And I know uh, Mark Cuban claimed that they didn't lose that many, but the NBA Finals yeah. still still did terribly. Now, I wanted to ask you if, um, if there's a specific thing other than these sports uh, leagues that I just mentioned that you recognize that just flipped the switch because – as soon as start Trump started coming around, the the biggest switch I noticed is in the the late night talk shows. They just couldn't help themselves. And magazines like uh, Time Magazine and the Rolling Stone. Did you notice that? Have you? Is there anything that you really liked that sort suddenly turned on a dime to be anti-Trump as soon as this all happened? Are you talking about the past Corona or just uh, 2016? Like 2016, and they've been going steady since then. Is there anything that you really liked Uh, that you had to be like, oh, man? Like, uh, for me, when you you see a real person, when you're real and you're not fake, uh, and then you see a real person, you recognize them right away. Like, you probably ran into the situations where you 
you just have a like you don't know the person but you just got few few words shared few words or he just gave you like he did something that you're like man that's like very like real res- uh, respect this guy and then for me every time the situation happens i ask the person by the way i'm like do you like trump and he's like yeah and i'm like holy fuck so i'm like 100 percent on <laughs> fucking always right in the situations like in new jersey one time i got pulled over like not just pulled over, i ran i ran across of the pol- like a uh, went in front of the police car i ran this stop sign i like i committed here that would shoot me already for the, for the <laughs> shit that i did and like, the guy comes in and he's like start talking to me nice didn't give me a ticket or anything and I was like sitting with my girlfriend. I was like, "You want to, you want to see the test?" She's like, "What?" And I'm like, "He's 100% Trump supporter." So I pulled down. Like uh, when he walks away, I was like, "Yo, hey, officer!" And I even recorded it. I have the video in my phone. And I was like, "Officer, who did you vote for, Trump?" He's like, "Of course." And I'm like, "Oh, fucking, <laughs> here we are." So with Trump situation, when he just a year, he's like the a year prior to the election, his campaign. Everything he was saying, everything he was doing, how he was talking, he could already tell he doesn't have an agenda. He's a different guy. So, like, I, like back in the day, right before him, I would always sing along with people saying the government, like, presidents are not chosen. Pres- pre- I mean, yeah. presidents are not, they, they're not voted in, they're chosen. Mm-hmm. They're all the same shit. With him, it was completely different. I was like, holy shit, man, I can't believe it. The shit that he was saying, the campaign video, then then him talking with, like, whatever, the uh, Vatican, like, a priest, and Hillary Clinton was there. Like, the shit he was saying, and I was like, wow. That just, and then why I loved it, because for the past probably 12 years, I've been into, into well, let's say conspiracy theories, but we can say conspiracy facts right now. I've, yeah, I've been we, just we into really that. can. <laughs> yeah, we really can. I mean, it's it's more it's more mostly facts now, everything. And so I just the other day on Facebook, I got uh, a, uh, a memory from 2009, I think, or 2010, from the Orgy Island of Epstein. I was like talking about <laughs> it on my like, on my Facebook. Nice. <laughs> like, you got to yeah, send me I'm the like, stuff you're talking about. Yeah, and I'm like, <clears throat> it was Orgy Island called back then. So I was like, I'm not like. It's not me just jumping off at it. I was like, finally, me that I thought I'm crazy. I thought all this questioning 9-11, all questioning all these things that have been happening for a long, long time. And then I was just like, I, did, I didn't have, with, like people like me, like you, we didn't have somebody at a higher power like Donald Trump to just say what we say. And then all of a sudden he appears and says, exactly what we believe. Did you hear him saying back in the day that he believes 9-11 was an inside job? There's no way the airplane could have done that. It was bombs exploded. Like he was saying, like he was, he's calling all these things. He's, he's making a uh, Obama back in the day. Like what, what was it like eight years ago? He was asking Obama to, is he called him Barry or what is it? He said like, show us your uh, birth certificate. I mean, all these things he was just saying it out loud and he continued saying it and still saying it. So when he came into power, I was like, fuck, we finally got a leader. We finally got somebody. We, we can't do anything. All of these like, people like us, conspiracy theorists or resistance or woke people or whoever the fuck we are, we cannot have a movement if we don't have somebody at a high position like, like Donald Trump because we have media, everything against us. So now we have Donald Trump. So, And then we're... I don't think we're losing the battle. I think we we will still it's we will win uh, by November, by January twentieth. <laughs> oh. I, I I honestly do. Now there's something somehow, that I've been asking. <laughs> there's something I've been asking people lately. Is do you think people st- are still getting red pilled by things? Do you think they're get, still getting uh, their minds changed? Because I when I think back to 2016, one of the, other than the Podesta emails, I think of Hillary passing out on on 9/11. And, pe- and then them, them trying to be like, oh, she's fine. That was, I think, obvious to most people that she wasn't fine. But in 2020 now, going on 2021, do you think people are still having those moments? Is like the coronavirus maybe the last thing that gets everybody else on board with, uh, I don't know about on board, but gets everybody to realize that most stuff that we see is like is public relations. It's, it's try to sell, trying to sell you something. Hundred percent. So the red pilling 
is for this like you know QAnon movement and all this stuff like I don't really support and like them because they've been these are people that that put like it's funny it's like it's I'm not praising myself or anything but it's just I've been in this for a very long time and then they appeared in 2017 so they're getting all this information just right away at them so they're just picking up on anything they don't analyze they don't filter uh, I agree they're completely up, oh man yeah they pick they made us look stupid. I swear to God, man. They made us look like a cult. They made us look like stupid. A lot of the dumb, dumb, dumb people fall into this QAnon and they start walking around. Are we are woke? We're this and that. I'm like, fucking. What do you mean woke, man? I, I cannot. I mean, we've been we've been woke. Who are you telling woke? What are you? What are the you? The thing talking that about? bothers me the most uh, is when you. It's fine that you don't believe everything that the media tells you, but you, but somehow on the other side you see just like a text printout. That some guy emailed you, and that's these you don't people talking it, about. Yeah, and it's like predicts yeah. everything. Yeah, that's yeah. Like, that bullshit that came came like a year ago, and people are like, oh my god, oh my god, and people start believing in this shit. There's another one that's right now coming about Canadian situation. Some somebody else sent me that text, and I'm like, don't ever fucking send me this shit. Oh, trust like, me, I, they email I, me dozens yeah. of times a day. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, bro. I bet, I bet that you probably like have to like already build an armor around around yourself now, because <laughs> this is like it's pathetic, man. So like I kind of dislike this a lot of people. A lot of them are obviously like a lot of them obviously been in it way longer, and they're like, okay, let's let's have a movement queue, but they they discredit us <clears throat> a lot. <clears throat> but uh, do you think people are still being red pilled? Yeah, that was the question. Yeah, people, are, people, yeah, people, one hundred percent still being red pilled because it's like it, everything went to their subconscious mind. People like us. This is, it was very important. People like asking me, why am I keep reposting this shit? Why am I keep reposting? Or like, keep talking about politics and this and that. Because I'm hoping that, at, like, by accident or whatever, like, even people that are against it, but they're still looking at your story. You, The one thing I cannot control is your subconscious mind. So everything, it's like a sponge. Everything gets into you. So at some point, it's like, all of this is, is 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 doubts. All of these articles is like, and the things that that make sense. We don't we don't like we don't post some stupid shit. We just say things that make sense. Why is Trump racist or whatever? You know what I mean? Just like these little things here and there. And then people read it. They don't realize it. They might be against it, but in a year or two, that doubt of that like that that's like a, it's like a seed and it's gonna grow. That doubt is gonna grow in their head, and then they're gonna be like, holy shit, man. Wait a second, what is this corona bullshit? So the people that are waking up with this corona lockdowns are it's it's not just because of corona lockdowns, it's it's mainly because of Trump, it's mainly because of people like us, mainly because of conspiracy theories, because you cannot run away from it. Like you you see it on social media, you see it everywhere. You might ignore it, but it gets into your subconscious mind. And then and then right now people are like, Holy shit, man, this corona doesn't make sense, but wait a second. Who was the person that was saying everything that we're saying right now? Fuck lockdowns, fuck masks, fuck this and that. It was Donald Trump. So all these motherfuckers that are against Donald Trump are right now singing Donald Trump's song. You know what I mean? What what he was saying. He was saying like he was saying fuck lockdowns, fuck masks. Let's leave with Corona. Let's beat it. Let's not lock down. Let's not kill the economy. And then now this like a lot of people that still against against Trump, but they're for like anti-lockdowns and stuff so so yeah people getting red pilled mainly because of trump and then corona is just the last few uh, yeah i guess it's a red pill <laughs> maybe the, you know now, chris, now they're ready to be red pill with this corona you know who chris sky is uh, i've seen him at the adamson barbecue uh fuck i seen him actually somewhere before what is he like a, a comedian or magician <laughs> neither he's, i'm pretty neither. sure he, he made all his money in real estate i'm pretty sure and now he's just going with all this stuff he i i he's made a lot of predictions that i fi find that he they were specific enough that they've come true and he never really sided up with like oh, some of these groups that have popped up they're trying to swindle people out of money one guy's super questionable he said that pedophilia is okay there's all this weird stuff that, uh, yeah. that people are saying, and he, but he was able to predict some of the stuff that locked it, about the lockdowns and about the the mask mandates. So I figured he'd be some somebody you liked, 
Um, Did he have like a video? Did he make a video about the, all of that? Because I, I, I honestly run into his stuff many times, uh, many, many, many times. I, I, I'm pretty sure he actually made a video, talk, like an event went viral. Yeah, but he's like, always. Last time I heard about him, was, it was at Adamson Barbecue. Yeah, he's always giving like a big speech at the uh, at the protests in Toronto. Um, mm. Oh, okay. The, he was at the hair, young, uh, really big. Yeah. Okay. Now, 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 I know who he is. A year ago, no, not a year ago. About six months ago, he made like a on Dundas Square beside Eaton Center. Mm-hmm. He was talking about anti-lockdowns and all this shit, and then a lot of people were behind him, like in front of him, like big crowd. Yeah, and he so said that's, that. That's uh, what I seen the first time. He said that they're going to lock down for the second wave again. He said the masks are going to become mandatory in businesses. It's coming true. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's try to end on something fun and and fight related. Tell me your favorite current fighter and your least favorite current fighter. <laughs> oh, fuck. Who are you excited to see right now? I'm thinking um, uh, Mayev is really fun right now. Um, that guy who knocked out Jockeray off his back, Holland, I believe his name is really fun right now. Who do you like right now? You know what? Now as you ask me, I just don't want to think too much. Just one name came to my head right away, and it was Hamza Chimaev. Yeah. Because we're all from the same place. Like Habib, yeah. Hamza Chimaev, me. We're all like in Russia. We're in a Caucasus region in the mountains. So he's he's like... That just because of that, I'm related to him. But <clears throat> no, I actually want to see him because I want to see if it's uh, if he's real. If if, if uh, I just I just want him to be tested, and uh, Edwards will be actually a good test. Mm-hmm. Everybody else wasn't a good test for him, but if he can walk through him, which I th- I'm pretty sure he will, then that I can I can just uh, have the check mark that's saying that yeah, finally we have somebody that's going to be easily champion and dethrone that. Uh, Kamaru Usman, to be honest. And speaking of least favorite fighter, Kamaru Usman, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I didn't like, um, it's I, not Kamaru Usman's fault, but I didn't like how they tried to play Colby Covington as racist for the stuff. He, he didn't say anything racist about him. I don't, did, did, uh, did, 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 did you see it didn't work out? If it was any other sport, Colby Covington would have been kicked out. It yeah. did not work out. You see, that's what I'm saying. We are real. I don't have a problem with Kamaru Usman. He's just not very exciting. He's not an exciting athlete. I'd put him with the guy he destroyed, Tyron Woodley. I'd put him there. He, but he doesn't complain as much as Tyron Woodley. He's just not yeah, an Tyron exciting person. Yeah, Tyron Woodley is like the worst person. personality ever. Actually, you know what? I'll put Tyron Woodley there. Never mind. Tyron Woodley, number one, the most I, – I cannot stand the guy because he's been pulling, bringing up this race card for the past mm-hmm. like four years – out of nowhere to put him on Fox. He's the champion. They, I mean, nobody, nobody's talking more. UFC is not doing more like videos and commercials about anybody else, but you motherfucker. And you still bring it up. This race card. You're in it's Fox. On their, one of their analyst. shows. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. And a Fox, like a UFC Fox, like analyst, and you're still talking racism. And then you come in with this BLM shirt and a post fight, con- like pre fight conference, and then you get your ass smashed the next, your face smashed the next day by Colby. But I mean, this this is the biggest racism actually there. Like, like he, he's actually the racist guy. You know, Angela opinion. Hill yeah, used to Kamaru say this was- stuff too. Andrew, who? Angela Hill used to say this stuff too years hey, ago. Angela Hill, yeah, yeah. I think she probably changed a bit. Uh, uh, maybe she grew up more, but like four or five years ago, she used to be when she was an Invicta. She used to complain about that a lot too, and she on behalf of Tyron Woodley, and, I, and that really annoyed me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, do you think uh, Conor McGregor was waiting to see if they could get a crowd back before he agreed to fight? That's what I think happened. You think he wanted the crowd? No, no, no. I think it was negotiations for Habib. You think so? All this, like, yeah, yeah, has nothing to do with the crowd, man. If the guy wanted to fight, he would fight. He's not get. Uh, he he was negotiating for Habib, and then just, and then just, uh, no, no, it was hundred percent. Everything was about Habib. Oh, I know man, he was man. negotiating. Uh, I know he was negotiating through through different people. I know he was negotiating for that fight. He was asking, whatever, whichever way possible, he was asking for that fight, and so he was hoping that he'll get it. And then Habib is just man of his word, just keeps his word, like and 
it's not about the money it's about whatever so there's just so I'm, many people in that like wait so many matchups in the lightweight division that i want to see and even <laughs> if they went up to 172 uh it, it's just insane so there's a, those three cards coming up uh in january which is going to be crazy um do you care about i was talking to tj laramie he wants the crowds back do you want them back like is it really important to you or do you just want to fight at this point uh you know <clears throat> at this point i just want to fight but i've been always because my number one problem i have losses in my career which up until i lost i was winning so it was it was mainly it's not an excuse it's it's the fact it's the reality that uh, main reason that I don't perform even at twenty percent of what I what I can do, and people know everybody that inspires me, they know what I can do. It's 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 because of the pressure, the the bright lights, people, the fans. Because for BTC, I sell out the arenas all the time, and, and I have so much support. It puts so much pressure into me that I, I really don't even feel my legs. I I, 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 I throw the kick and I sleep on, in a cage. You know what I mean? I don't feel the distance and everything. And and I've been always. I've been always, even before Corona, I've been thinking, what if there will be no crowd or no cameras? I'm, I was, I was always confident that I will perform much, much better, because I believe that everything is psychological and it's all my number one problem for me. Not technique, not none of that. Well, technique is you always have to progress and everything, but right now, it's all my losses, number one problem was psychological part, and then right now. I see I haven't fought without people yet. I fought when arenas were full, February 29th was my last one. So I haven't fought in this empty arenas. I will be able to tell this after my next fight, but so far I I, I just want to get a fight in and I'm actually happy that there's not going to be any people so I can have this theory in my head. Either it's going to be a reality or whatever it was just a theory so I can actually put it into, into test and... I do want to come out with my new book. I have a new book now, Liberal Privilege. I, I oh, do want to put a MAGA hat on and I want to read it. Liberal Whose Privilege, yeah, I got it about a month ago. I got it signed by uh, Donald Trump Jr. Oh, new that's book. his new book. Okay, he personally right. signed it to me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I do talk to him all the time, actually. And I'm actually the person that set up Masvidal and the and him the socialism bus, anti-socialism thing. I'm nice. the one that set it up. Well, yeah, we gotta I'll, talk about I that next time. We have to have you back to talk next about that stuff we'll... too. Let's All do right, it, man. <laughs> Vladimir Kuzbekov. Well, Stone still did nothing wrong. <laughs> You know, I mean, CNN know. got tipped off that CNN wasn't waiting outside of Roger Stone's house for no reason. <laughs> yeah, they came That's in. They, the CNN came in there twenty minutes before. Uh, yeah, before the uh, F- police. Yeah. How's my How's my socks? Do you remember them at the at the video at the Adamson Barbecue? <laughs> no, I didn't see those. I was there too. I don't know if I saw you or not. The uh, I was the second there, day. I was there. Uh, I was there first uh, two days. Okay, then so, we yeah, probably I was... I was there somewhere then. Yeah. All right, brother man. Uh, nice talking to you. We'll talk again. You, t- uh, you too, hope. man. Yeah, let's definitely do this again. Trump twenty twenty, man. <laughs>